this computer and uh, and we're live or and we're not live sorry <laughs> um, so uh, so so Pedro okay yeah so so as I mentioned earlier I, I, I spoke to I mean Dimitri did a lot of the initial work on on this topic um, but this has has went through a couple of iterations with Dimitri and I with Mate um, and then this is also um, in the past week, I thought a lot about this with in regard to the activity feed as well. So, so there's a lot there. So let me try to distill it to um, some really simple things. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, so I have an epic that is not. Um, it, it, it's not planned work. It's just uh, re relevant issues. And what I also did was, um, while everybody was away on Summit, um, I also did a lot of uh, just, you know, just uh, I'm trying to understand for myself more about notifications in Scikit-Lab. So if you click through all these notifications uh, issues, what I did was just to get myself un understanding notifications better. I started documenting how notifications work inside GitLab. So, so to me, that's one step of this problem is just to get your mind around how notifications work because they're really confusing inside GitLab. So in my opinion, if you want to do a good job of designing what we want to do, you have to do a good job of understanding notifications too. So I want to linger there for a second. Um, so as you know, in GitLab, you get notifications and they are email notifications. That's the only channel to get a notification. And uh, it is a notification in the truest sense that it is triggered by an, an event. And so there are, um, there are a couple of ways to um, get notifications uh, uh, due to se several events. And then um, you can set notification levels, as you know, like disabled, unmentioned, participate, and so on and so forth. So it gets a little bit confusing because if, especially if you look at the documentation, which isn't really good and I'm trying to improve, is that notification levels sort of prescribe what happens or a group of events, but that's not really accurate. Um, a better way to think about it is that there's events and then there's notification levels and then they pick certain events to send out a, a notification. And so that's what I try to exactly uh, scope out here. So um, when you look at, so you have these different types of notifications, right? So when you look at a, um, when you look at the notification settings here, you can set the notification level per the entire GitLab, the global one, and then you can inherit that. You can inherit that at the group level. You can further inherit inside a group level. You can inherit that at the project level, as as you know, right? So you can inherit that at the at the project level. You can inherit the where is it? Oh, everything's changed now. I'm lost uh, here, right? So you can inherit that at the project level, which, or, or override, right? And then at the project level, so I'm, I'm talking scope, right? So there's global, group, and project. And then at the project level, it further goes down to issues, merge requests, and so on and so forth, right? So at the issue level, you can further, um, Another, this is sort of not presented in the UI, but this is how I'm thinking about it, which I think makes sense. You can further override it at the issue level with this thing here, right? Um, and then within an issue, you can, there, there's, there's, you, there's uh, the concept of per, like you can get a notification per comment or if the description change, and you cannot override it, right? So be, like everything has to be consistent per issue. So you can see that there's like multiple levels of um, scope in the sense of what generates a event, right? It's all the way at the comment level, uh, commit, a, 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 an action like opening or closing a, a issue. So all that gets merged really murky and it's really, it can get really confusing really quickly. So I super encourage folks to think about that deeply when, when uh, talking about the design. And so I, I tried to distill it, it's still not perfect, but this is one way to look at it, which is um, if you have an issue merge request on Epic, and then you have the events of those things being opened, closed, or reopened, or merged, then do you 
get a notification, right? So if your all your notifications are disabled in the notification level, then obviously you don't get a notification. If it's set on on mention, then if the description of the notification mentions you, then you will get one. Uh, if you are a participant, meaning that you are at mention and you automatically become a participant, then yes. And then if you're watch, yes, uh, custom if checked. And manual, unsubscribe and manual subscribe is referring to this thing here, right? And so you can see, I, I purposely, I'm talking about this one. It doesn't apply for this one because the issue has not been created yet. So this thing doesn't apply. So this is like, to me, this was really helpful just doing this exercise and getting my head wrapped around um, this, this scenario. Um, and then another and that also one, applies to epics, correct? Yes, exactly. Yep. yep. And then uh, another, so, so this one would be, quote unquote, a more obvious one. So assignees change, then if you're a participant or you're the previous or new assignee, then you'll get a notification for these levels uh, and so forth, and then not for these levels, right? So that one's a little bit more obvious. Um, issue due tomorrow is a brand new notification that uh, I think Mark C from previous Unplanned team, I think is now in Create back in. Um, so something like this. And then um, the comment one is, a really good one. Um, so again, this is what we think about when you notifications, right? Oh, you're mentioned if you're a participant. So these are like the easy ones, but if you think about it, like the, the state one is sort of weird. So, so that's why I did. So there's a lot more, right? Um, what's missing from this list is approvals and pipelines and a couple more. So there's not too many, but there are a couple. So that's the state of affairs for notifications in GitLab. To do's were a little bit more confusing for me because I don't use to do's and that's that's a problem. Um, but to do's are a little bit, um, I don't know if they're easier to understand, but what, what do you use? It's just the emails that you get from notifications? Yes, yes I, I don't look at to do okay. um, as a user. But why I say to do's are, are easier because it's, it's similar in concept in that there is a there's an event that happens and it triggers a to do to be created and it's logged in your to do list and you can mark it done and undone. Um, but those events, there's a smaller number of events and you cannot configure that, right? GitLab decides for you what what will give you a to do or not, right? And so it's more or less more or less um, mentioned in this doc, which is because it's similar to notifications, it's, it's, it's like a lot better doc, right, by definition. So what triggers it to do are essentially all these things, right? Uh, I think do tomorrow is missing. Uh, and then directly address to do is a, is a spin on that. But um, so you have all these things. What's different between to do's and, and notifications is that there's additional functionality with to do's. So beyond like an issue being assigned to you, you are met and mentioned, uh, pipeline fails and so forth. Um, in addition to that functionality, um, you can filter on, you have a web UI of to do's, right? And you can filter it. And then you can further change the state of a to do. And you can obviously create a to do from scratch um, from an issue itself. So this is when I do like a feature comparison between this and notifications, that, that's a huge difference, right? Because notifications, it's just, it, it, it sends something to your email and then it's in your email thread and then GitLab knows nothing about it from that, from then on. Like GitLab has no control about it and you don't have any control about it with, I mean, you can use your email client to do amazing things, but you, it's not integrated in GitLab. Whereas to do's, it's, it's sort of like the opposite, right? There's less configurability from when the event triggers it, but then afterward, you can configure a lot more. You can manage a lot more. I, I didn't. I, I like. I'm gonna praise myself and like. Think that's a nice way to think about it, right? The, 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 it's sort of like this. I don't know. That seems like something sort of fundamental from a GitLab perspective. I suspect that just happened by like Darwinian evolution or osmosis. Like we have something that's really configurable for no notifications, and people were using it but we didn't have something to do like managing our to-do list and we invented it. And then we sort of like two things evolved and then we never thought to bring them together. 
And since we're not Darwinian evolution, we, we, we are actively trying to influence the system, we can probably do a better job um, are actively designing that. So to me, in a nutshell, those are like sort of two different ways, like the, the, two, the two feature sets. So I think everything I said is not opinionated or more or less fact. So I'm going to stop there and say like, is there any uh, thing just, just I want to lay the groundwork on like, um, did we miss anything when just talking about notifications and to do's from a like feature existing feature perspective? I don't think so. I think most not of um, even before I jump to my proposal or, or what, what we've talked about, I want to talk about something that so one go ahead. Sorry, yeah, one, one thing I, I would say is that uh, at least to my understanding, to do's are so like and, and other than the to do's that you manually create, so essentially uh, to do's that are created by someone else. Um, all of them usually are think I think they're all they all map to notifi a notification. So in my view, as a user, maybe right. I'm incorrect in like one or two events, but the way I see it, my mental right. model is you have notifications, and those can be directly addressing you or just you're just following right. an issue or something like that or a project. And then inside of notifications, like a subset of subset, those notifications yeah. create to-dos. Uh, and of course, you have that special case where you can manually create a to-do for right, yourself. Right. That is not attached to well, yeah. any notification. That's the way I perceive it in my head. Yeah, and, and I would say, again, back to my silly analogy, it's that, that was a, um, I don't know if it was intentional, you know, like I, I would have to talk to the people who invented these things, but to me, when I look at the existing implementation, uh, it was more, more, more luck and, and, and consequence than intentional design that, like you said specifically the subset, right? So because there's literally nothing in the product that integrates those two. It's just, it's a happenstance. Yeah. Those things yeah. Are, are a subset. So that, that's why my guess is that they weren't designed intentionally together. Um, and then so I'll, I'll highlight a couple more features that as I was talking to the managed team last week over Slack that things that things came up. So um, a couple another feature that's that's I think relevant is this thread of system notes and comments inside an issue or an epic or a comment or uh, sorry issue epic or a merge request. If you think about it, this is also very similar to your notification stream or your to do stream. Right. So again, I'm not going to put any opinion on it. I'm just going to mention that there is some repetition here, right? This data, this content here is very similar to your to-dos and to your notifications, right? And then again, if you think about it, I don't think that the, there's any intentional thought being put into uh, design it together or, or, or reuse it or, or, or purposely not reuse it and so on and so forth. That, but, but that every time we add a new feature, we have to, Add the system note, add the notification, add the to do, and then, as we'll see in a second, add it in the activity thread and all those other things, right? So there's a system note thread or the comment thread or the activity thread uh, within an issue, an epic, or, or a, a merge request, and then we have the personal feed or, or profile, or whatever it's called. Uh, we have this thing here, right? And then I believe this one and this one, thankfully, are the same. Um, because they look radically the same. Um, but you can see like th there's an activity, th uh, activity feed concept within GitLab and it's replicated in the profile page. Um, there is again, very little configuration um, in the sense that you, know, you can click around and so there's configuration. What's that configuration? It's, it's multiple w ways to view the same uh, feed filtered by these thingies here. Um, but there's, there's not much more configuration beyond that. And the, the reason I mentioned this again is to me, it's, it's repeated information. So again, I'm not putting a judgment on if we should not repeat or how we merge or don't merge this information, but I mentioned that it is re replicated information uh, in the sense that it is the same model of there's an event inside GitLab and then uh, it triggers some type of UI to the user that they can see. 
Um, and then why I mentioned this and why there's more managed people here in the call is that the managed folks have already done a lot of awesome design on revamping this. So I don't want to go off too far on a tangent uh, and let Mate talk a lot about that. I'll, I'll let maybe if we have time at the end, Mate, I'll, I'll let you talk about that. Uh, but I just want to stop there um, and then go quickly talk about my concept and then and then I'll let you guys just talk forever. Um, so so I'll move on really quick and just please interrupt me. So I'm going to move on to the, the initial concept I have um, in talking with Mate and, and Dimitri. Um, so, so the concept I have is in, in two of these issues here. Um, and then the merge one is, is a evolution of the pin and unpin one. So I'll just talk about the newer concept um, first or, or only, um, and then I'll let you folks talk. So the, the concept I have here is that you no longer have any, um, sorry, uh, this one is the newer one. The, you no longer have a separate concept of notifications and to-dos. And instead, you have one stream of notifications inside GitLab. And so the way to think about this is just, just forget about to-dos. Like, so there's going to be a migration path, right? Whatever we end up doing, we need to have a implementation strategy so people don't get pissed off because we ripped to-dos on day one and we have no functionality replacing it, right? So we would never do that. And we would probably won't even do a, a version where like we remove to do's and say like, oh, you can read, you can do all these, your, your existing workflows in this other way. We probably won't even do that. It would probably be some phased approach, right? So I'm ignoring what, figuring out what we're doing there. I'm just talking about the end, the, the ideal utopian end state for this, for the purpose of this discussion. In my utopian end state is that there's no more to do's as a concept. And you can you just receive notifications as usual, and those notifications um, we would we would allow you to uh, have the same notifications, but uh, add like all the events that are missing. For example, like um, uh, I think like approvals. There's like a bazillion ways to do approvals. We would like round out all those approvals, or the way to do custom notifications. There's certain events that are not allowed. We would add those in. Um, and especially the ones that are like, you said subset, right, Pedro? Like for to-dos or subset of notifications. I think there's like some one or two edge cases which it's not a totally subset. So we would either like be mean and not include them or we try to refactor it in, in a new way. But suffice it to say like notifications should be okay in that as long as we change the system of way the notifications work to replace the to-dos, it should, people should not be losing uh, their existing uh, features. And so how I, my, 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 my proposal is that you, you get your notifications as usual inside your email client, but they appear exactly the same in the web UI inside GitLab. So this, this purposely looks exactly like inbox by Gmail or Gmail. And then so with each issue, you have multiple notifications, as you can see here. And you would be able to um, do... Uh, sorry, I thought I had a different visual. I might be wrong. Um, but the concept I had is that you would be able to pin individual notifications, not notification, not the group, but just pin in the individual notifications. And the reason you want to pin in, uh, individual notifications, that's equivalent to creating a to-do, right? So right now when we create a to-do, we, we create it by doing this here. So the concept I have here is that instead of doing it here, uh, and this I totally stole from Mate and uh, I give him all the credit, um, but I, I give credit to my like subconscious self because I just thought of that naturally and I'm like, I know that was me sleeping on Mate's idea. Um, so the idea is like Jeremy at CC'd me, for example, and mentioned me here. And then I want to create a to-do for that because that's important to me. I would click a button here to click add to-do, right? But instead of creating a to-do in the, in the sense of a to-do, it's a notification and I just pin it. So I can do it either here or I can do it in the notifications UI equivalently. And then that's fine, right? Um, but what do you do with all those automatic to-dos that's created? It's equivalent to configuring your notifications. You would have a UI to where you configure whether you get a no notification sent to you or not. You, you would also be allowed to say, 
um, I want to um, have these notifications automatically pinned when they're sent to me. So I think in my other issue, I have a better mock-up. So one thing I'll just say is that uh, with, with that thinking, if uh, that example of creating um, a to-do or whatever you want to call it from that comment specifically, um, if, if you're doing that from a project that, or, or for, from somewhere that you're not, you've not been mentioned, you're not a member of the project, you're not a member of a group, and you just want to create a to-do from that, that's not a notification because you have not been subscribed to that project, nor okay. that group, nor that thread. So okay. it's essentially you're kind of bookmarking something, right? Yep. Um, and so you're creating that to-do or whatever you want to call it, but it's not a no notification because you have not received that notification before. Yes. You know, you're, yeah. you're kind so, of yeah, bookmarking no, I, that, that single comment right. uh, that so has that, never appeared in your notification thread before. Yep, yep, that, I, I totally agree with that, Pedro. And um, so I, I don't want to argue with you on that one. I'll just leave it as, if I were to argue with you, I would say um, come up with a awesome design where you can merge those two concepts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, w I was just mentioning this. Exactly. I, I think, yeah, no, and then I, I think, yeah. and, and if you ask Dimitri, he'll say that, you know, Victor and I went through this like for like three hours, right? <laughs> and just those, those concepts. So um, I, I, my, my contention is that you can call them notifications, you can call them activity, you can call them whatever you want. I'm, I will argue for a design where you can reuse these concepts and be flexible in a way. So I'm, I'm, I'm for example, I'm not tied to the word notification. I'm not tied to the word um, pinning and I'm not tied to the word to-dos, but I'm somewhat, I would argue for something, and then you know I could be argued against, obviously, but I would argue for something that, that combines concepts and reuses ideas, and so that we're not re-implementing the same thing or having the, not just for design, not enough for just for code's sake and code reuse, but just for the sake of a user not having to go to two separate UIs to manage the same thing. So, so, so that's, that's what I, so I, I, let me, just finish this design in like two minutes and then I'll let you guys go, go on. Um, so, so that's why I said like in your notification setting, you would be able to automatically set something here, right? So automatically pin notifications. So that's the concept here, right? So if you're in this concept, I don't, I don't know what my final thing that I would care about. So I don't think it really matters because this will be a greater conversation. But for example, will you be allowed, uh, um, in my initial mockups here, for example, you have to, receive a notification in order to make it automatically pin it or to create a to-do, right? So you can imagine a scenario where you choose not to get it into your email, but you choose to have it appear in the web UI. Um, and so you have more configurability that way. So that, to me, that's a little bit weird. I, and I don't know the answer to that. So, so that's my super awesome idea that's not, that was really inspired by Matei and Dimitri. So I give them all the credit. Um, and, and just merging those two, two concepts. And then my, my further crazy idea, which I don't think uh, Matei, I don't know what Matei thinks about this, but I think Jeremy didn't like it that much. So I, I can be argued against this one. Um, but for example, I, I was suggesting something really crazy, which is, can we just reuse these system notes here or comments and just dump these into the notifications themselves, right? So like, I don't like the fact that Jeremy is saying all this and then I look at my to-dos and it says like, Jeremy said blah 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 and then it says dot 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 and then like something like that right like, I think we can be able to reuse it obviously like maybe using templates or something so that it's not identical from a visual perspective a user perspective but the fact that like in the system like from a conceptual level it's the same object and I think we should be able to reuse it and then so when I saw activity feed I, I took it to the next ultimate extreme and said like system notes um email alerts, notifications, and activity feed, all those things should just be the same object, right? And then uh, visually, yes, they maybe can be different, but the fact is that you have one place to trigger, uh, like there's all these events at GitLab, and then for a given event, like you are at mentioned in an issue, that can trigger three things, right? It can trigger an activity feed thing that appears, it can trigger an email notification, 
and it can trigger a, a notification that appears in the web UI in GitLab. And my contention is that we're repeating ourselves too much and we should be reusing that content at least somehow. Um, but, uh, and then in, in like a really bad UI, it would just be identical in all three cases, right? In my, like if I were to invent GitLab, which would be a terrible idea, it would just be identical in all three places and it would be like, you would never have to, it would never be different. It would be essentially be uh, similar to all in reads in Slack, for example. Yeah, yeah. Like in Slack, you can see everything is a message, and even like if you take system actions, it's always a message, right? And then you can see the designs very intentional there. They don't have separate UI. But yeah, that's that's a good point, Dimitri. So and, I'm, I'm actually, go ahead. One 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 more thing. Um, I'm actually done. So so Dimitri, let me stop, <laughs> let me stop you there and just interrupt and say I'm done. So Dimitri, you finish off, and then you guys keep talking. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to say one thing I, I do like about like this unification of all the different things and reusing um, the same information everywhere is that I, I think it would be really beneficial as well to be able to see like if you look at your screen on your PC, right, regardless of where you look in the application, it is only presented to you. It's it's a it's a it's a weird thinking that like if I look at something it should be the same as to somebody else. No, there could be personalized content in, the content in there. For example, what I do like in, in Slack is that I can see personally where I have I have seen the messages in a certain channel, yes or no. And then if I go like if there are new messages in that channel or in that issue in GitLab, I would want to see like okay I've read previously up until here. And all um, new content is beyond that line, for example. And I think uh, the concept that Victor talks about, unification of all those different, uh, of that different information would make that possible. For example, if we call it unread, or it doesn't matter what we call it, but I think that's a, a pretty nice um, addition to it. So, um, I'll let Pedro and Annabelle drive the discussion here. Like, but ultimately, I, I, I want the, the output of this meeting is you, you folks have enough information to know what next steps are, and then you, you, know, you folks should be calling meetings and, and pulling various people in to, to, to talk about design and stuff. Um, so any questions, comments, Pedro and Annabelle now. And I'll, as, as you do that, I will pull up the designs from the managed team that Jeremy showed me. That looks really awesome as well. Animal, you want to say anything? Yeah, I was going to say one of the things that will really help replace using both emails and to do's is basically what was just said. Um, you get so much more context when you get an email notification. It tells you the full comment. Um, and then if you're using a to do, you have to go and click on, you know, it only shows you that tiny little bar. So if there was some sort of expand feature within that to do or if we're going to call it right right um pinned notification that would give you more information so you don't have to click through wait for that page to load and then decide that you need to dismiss it or unpin it i think that's um going to be huge in in just removing and in, in relying on both emails and to do's um i was going to say also another thing i was thinking of is when i'm working i keep my gmail my GitLab email pinned in my browser and I watch the little number counter go up and then I respond if it goes up. So I know that we have that counter on our to-dos. Um, I don't know if it's always 100% accurate. I know that we've had problems in the past where the counter didn't actually add up to the number of merge requests or issues. So we need to make sure that that is always working in real time and it's completely you know, perfect. Um, so that's something I was thinking of. And I do like the idea of system notes mapping to the to-dos because that would also help giving you a lot more context um, when you're just looking at the to-dos UI. Uh, those are just my initial thoughts. Um, I haven't looked into it quite as much as everyone else here probably. So I'm just showing, um, Matei, I assume you put this together. It looks really awesome. Um, the, the no, that's actually Chris. For oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Chris, wherever you are. Um, it looks, I mean, it's just visually, it looks awesome. So, um, 
uh, my crazy idea is that so so this is this is where I don't know, but like how does notification and activity feed blend together, if at all? Like like is it a separate tab? Is it is your notification feed it's the same thing as your activity feed? Like there's a the discussion in, in Slack, which is like in, in Facebook or whatever, insert your own social app, you have a home feed or activity feed, a news feed, right? That's how they make money. And then there's a notifications, which is not really a feed, um, and they're separate UIs. Um, I would argue like it's different because like when you go to GitLab, you're not just scrolling through an activity feed, you're, you're getting work done. And then when you're looking at activity feed, it's probably, um, it's very intentional because maybe you, you look at stuff that you care about, or maybe you're, you're, maybe you are in browse mode, but why do we need a, do we need a really strong browse mode category or can, can it be just like a different type of notification feed or something like that? So to me, it's really weird that you would have two separate UIs for noti notifications and activities. So, I mean, so w w this view, like this, this, this same page, activity or projects, and then all, this would be exactly the same content that you would have in a notifications feed if you were watching that's a, all projects. That's exactly what everything. I said, said to Jeremy in the Slack. That's, that was exactly my first. That's response. that's exactly the same. So if yeah. you say in the project, in my project, I want or global. To, you can just say global. <laughs> or global, yeah. <laughs> I want to receive notifications about every kind of activity. It will be the same. I mean, here we have push events, merge events. Uh, well, maybe some events we don't uh, we don't have notifications, but it's mostly the same. Exactly. So, uh, I, I would say that these these are like these can could could have been all of them notifications, exactly. and you're just kind of filtering your feed to see everything, or just to see what uh, the activity right um, based on your notifications level, for exactly. example. Um, yeah. So the, the only thing I'm not particularly sold on is the like putting to do's in, in, as a mental model, putting to do's or whatever we, we want to call them pins or uh, stars or whatever, and put those in the same interface as notifications. Um, I don't know. That's the only thing I'm unsure. And I don't have, I'm, I'm like, I don't think we need to decide on that right, right. now, but it's, like, like my, my, I would argue for like, not, not even interface Pedro, but like more uh, at the, like you have an, you have some object and you can turn it into essentially a to do or, or like, it just shouldn't be separate concept, both like visually you can do anything you want. Like you can have a filter, right? You can, you can have a list of notifications, whatever, and then you can click to a different UI and then you would see the, the same set, but filtered to ones that are to do's. But what I really don't like is that inside GitLab, there are two separate concepts. And so I don't think there should be separate concepts, even user facing, right? To, to a user, why do you need to care about two separate things, like a, a to-do and a notification? Like you, you just get an object, you're sent an object, and then sometimes that object, um, GitLab tells you that uh, it has pre checked marked it for you it has pre added it to a to-do list for you automatically and sometimes uh, it hasn't and sometimes you don't even get a notification because of that and so that that's why i see it all on the same spectrum of the same object versus a separate thing um, but visually like ui wise it can you can do whatever you want but that that's my contention yeah i agree with with being the same object like pulling the same data uh, even maybe having the same design Right, so right, right. You, like here we have this activity list. Maybe the items here could have the exact same data and visual design and interaction design as your uh, personalized notifications slash activity feed. And right. maybe the same design could be used for those pins or to dos or whatever you want to call them. Um, I, I think I think there's one one thing um, left like that is not been discussed yet. And I think it's important for the difference between 
for example, there's this more of a global or project-wide activity view that is visible to multiple people and uh, the view that is like personalized to yourself. Because I think uh, as, as how I see it is that the notification has a certain life cycle, right? And that life cycle is being like, is it are, like in, in, in what way does a notification as we like, let's, let's call it notification for now. In what way does it die in, in, in essence? Right? Like when, when does it pop up and is visible? And when is it pushed down or discarded? Uh, because for example, if I if like say that there are five issues and I've watched at issue number three and I've watched everything. And in the other issues, I, I have not watched everything. So if I go to my personalized notification list, I would see, I would see like if, if dependent on only viewing that content, right? I would see only the content from from issue one, two, three, or uh, one, two, four, and five, because number three I would have watched already. While in this view, I would have, I, I would see everything, right? So in in like uh, how how I thinking is like how are we making this this information useful to the user as like comparing to like a personalized view as a compared to like this this more global view which is which is visible to multiple people i mean your your personalized view of anything that has happened should so we so it's if it's pulling the same data we're like by default we're already storing all of this activity in the database right so we would also store because it's the same data we would store all of your notifications but what's important is the notifications that you have um that you have not read or that you have not seen right it's the same as when i click to see the notifications in um in facebook that has the number of the notifications i have not attended to and when i look at the list it automatically gets they automatically get read or the, the counter gets resetted. The same thing happens in Twitter. The same thing happens in Slack. When I go to all the reads or uh, all threads, it has a number of if you have been mentioned or threads you have not seen yet. And when you see them, they get cleared. But I still think that because we're storing all of that data, you could potentially if we want, we can enable people to look back into the history of notifications because we're already storing all of that information, right? And then what we need to do is, because I think this is kind of the notifications, they basically include everything that you want to see and then to-dos are mostly a subset. There can be some exceptions, but are mostly a subset. Um, I think from then on, what we need to figure out is how do we, bridge this gap between what is a notification in the sense that these are activities or system notes that I want to watch, want to follow. It's kind of like my news feed in Facebook, but then sometimes I want to save a notification. I want to save a post, a comment, uh, for yeah, later, I, right? I, and I, where I do think... you see that? I think to some extent, like, uh, like let, let, let's compare system notes to the activity view to not a notification view. So if you're in an issue and there's a new activity on that, on that issue, that content will be displayed in a system message, right? right? That system message will be there forever. In the activity view, it's a chronological view of the yes. events that have passed in the project. So in a chronological sense, all of the information will be there forever. Mm -hmm. But in your notification view, that will not be the case because some of the content is not relevant to you anymore, right? That that was basically the point I want I want wanted to make. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Think, yeah. I agree. I, I, yeah, I think it's super valid. And um, so so a couple of things in response to Pedro, or maybe just one thing with the activity, like like you 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 raised the example like if you're scrolling through like the the Facebook feed, it's almost like the, the activity feed of a single issue. It's, it's almost similar to that. And in the, in the sense that. Or the activity, that, the global activity. Or right? the global activity. And it's, it's similar in the sense that if you see something there that 
is interesting to you, you should be able to bookmark it, like you said, right? And or create a to-do. And so I, I'm thinking more from a use case perspective and actually thinking less from like, oh, we have to be, we have to have a separate activity feed and a yeah, notification. Exactly. So, so from a use case perspective, I think this, the same use case applies where whether you're looking at any type of feed inside GitLab, whether that's your system notes activity feed of an issue, your own profile, your activity feed of GitLab, you're looking at a, a list of notifications, you're looking at your email. Anytime you see a, a things happening, you should be able to click a button or do some interaction to save it for you to, to work on it later. So if that's, a case, if that's the case, that's a strong argument for having some unified design. And I, I'm, totally, yeah. I'm totally okay that visually it might be different, but, but there should be some common base data design so you, that, that is portable and you can take that and apply it anywhere. And then so to me, it, it's an exercise of, that's, that's one primary use case, sort of like a, a, a logical next use case is, GitLab does the super smart machine learning for you of when that will do it for you automatically. And then our machine learning algorithm zero is gonna be, you just configure it manually in some settings. And then like we would put like, GitLab is super smart machine learning, accepting merge requests and somebody will do it for us, right? The, the version where it, it's super smart and does and picks it up for you. And then so, so that's, that's a separate use case. And so nailing those two use cases is, is, is critical, I think is important. And that's a great part of the design. And then I think the hardest part of the design is to come, to come up with all those separate feeds, right? We have like, and, and how, how to uniform, unify that. And so I'm thinking that's, that, that would be a big chunk of the design work and all the designers on the call. So we have like a bunch of designers on the call, like almost half of the GitLab designers here. So, so um, that, that's what I'm looking for. Um, I, I agree. So one thing that we can already, I think, if someone doesn't agree, please speak up. So what I'm understanding is that to me, it makes sense. And from what you're saying, Victor, it also makes sense too, is to reuse the same design or the same patterns, or at least for the user, they would look at a system note in an issue or an activity object in the global activity list, activity list or an activity or a notification item in the notifications list or whatever we want to call them. All of these items at the macro level or at the smallest object level, which is at the issue or uh, merge request or epic level, all of those would share maybe the same, exactly same design or very similar design so that people can understand that these are the same things or that you can more or less interact with them in the same way. And today this is all different, right? The activity feed is different from the to-dos, it's different from the system notes and the comments in the issue. And sometimes it's okay to have those different because of right. space constraints or because of focus yeah. or whatever the user wants to accomplish in those views. But ultimately we should strive for more consistency and open up exceptions when the rationale right, is right, right. Uh, valid. I mean, like, like what, what Animal was saying earlier, like I can totally see this be similar to notifications and or like in that like this is like one sentence comment or, or like a shortened version and you click a interaction and you see the full comment either here or you you're brought to to the actual object right like i can i can like or like you were saying like when you create a to-do from one of these things like are you brought to the to-do ui or do you stay here or is there a nice little awesome pop-up or if you wanted to say you're in one of these things and you wanted to comment right away on an existing discussion, you should be able to, the, to do that really easily from here as well, right? Like, so all these use cases should be common. Like we should have like a portable, like object model, I think is, is, is what we're saying. I agree with that, yeah. At least I, there's, okay, Mate, you wanna say something and you haven't said yeah, that? Yeah, I was just going to say, but if we do that, right? Cause my initial idea was, Okay, currently we have all the to-dos, they are tied to issues, right? On the issue level, you can't really tie a to-do to a comment on the issue. And then my initial idea is, why don't we actually allow people to do that? There's a particular comment on an issue, and you want to, do a, to create a to-do from that, right? So now we're talking about extending it even further, so we could tie to-dos to basically all events inside GitLab, right? If I understand correctly. 
Yes, I think I think that's what we want. Yeah, to do. exactly. Yeah. But in that case, I don't see I don't see that being framed as notifications because notifications are something that you know someone interacts with me on an issue and I'm notified about it. It I don't see you know a system note being stored under a notification and then I'm able to pin it or whatever, right? So if, if I see a system node on an issue or on some other screen, I should be able to create a to-do from that. But then if, if we allow to create to-dos from all these events you know, globally, we should have the to-dos somehow separate still, and maybe even a separate screen where you see all of your to-dos, which are all the different events, right? You're not categorizing, categorizing them all of, those, all of them as notifications or something like that. Yeah, I think that, that goes back to the, like, how, how much, I think we agree to some degree on, on like, the underlying baseline object model. We should have some, something common because it's, it's helpful, but we probably need a further discussion in, in, on, on how to expose that to the user. But I'll just stick to the use case for now because I think that that's compelling and I could, I could you know, convince people, is that when I see this thing here, this is a system note, right? And if I were a backend manager, I'm like, somebody added backend to this and I didn't expect that and I want to take care of that. And I'm on my phone and I don't want to work, but I'm, I, I shouldn't be on my phone, but I'm on my phone anyways. So I'm going to you know, pin that or create a to-do or whatever and, and do something with that later. So I think that use case is, is relevant, but how you present it and how does that UI present itself, I agree, is, is not, it's not clear. Um, and so, so I'm, I'm fine with like just getting more ideas. Yeah, I just wanted to add one little thought to all of this because so far I've been agreeing with pretty much everything you've been discussing. Uh, whether it's pinning, uh, whether it's uh, whatever it is, is uh, what I have my current problem is that it's completely useless to me having the to dos, except it's just like a list I go back to every now and again because of the the it doesn't clear automatically. Um, and I've been discussing, I discussed this with Dawi the other day that um, when you have a to do for an issue or a merge request, I can remember, and then I comment on it, that activity will dismiss that to do item. Um, and it's not what I expected as a user. Uh, so having the to do pile up as unread items, unread items, unread items just made it rendering, just rendered it useless for me. So having this sort of notifications that I get to control what sticks and what doesn't stick for the future is definitely valuable in my perspective. Um, and apart from that, I think that's that's totally for the discovery phase. Um, that, that definitely, definitely, I'm interested in following. So what you're what you're saying is that, uh, and I think Victor, you also uh, brought that up, is to dos can be helpful but not everyone needs the same to-dos and they have to be configurable of what you receive right. or not. We can have smart defaults, but that, right. that's what right. you're saying, Andrea, right? But, I, but, I'm, but I'm okay with unifying. I want to make sure that that's clear. Uh, I think unifying it actually makes it more valuable um, because to me, the way I see notifications is stuff that is my attention. And what, what sometimes I'll do in the use case that Victor said, especially with, with um, you know, Slack or email or whatever, so if I if I look at it on a rush just to see what it is, and I don't want, and then I don't want to lose it next time, I will mark it as in red and see it next Monday. Uh, we can go even a step further and use like what um, snooze uh, or whatever inbox used like resurface this tomorrow morning. Yep, yep. But that's way more elaborate than we need for the first round. But I I, I definitely need to have a mark as in red thing if it clears as soon as I follow the link. Uh, that's what Facebook does and what, what most of right, the notifications right. people allow is just, I just click the notification to see what it actually is, but then, oh, okay, I don't, I'm not going to deal with that now. And then I want to have an ability to have that um, pop up as a reminder next day or whatever time I look at it, whether it's pinning, whether the solution is pinning or marking as in red, yeah. I'll leave that to you guys to sort yeah. out on the yeah. to, to me, I'll add my thoughts really quickly. To me, there's like three states, and it's just like, do we want all three or we want two of them, which is there's the neutral state, there's the actively dismissing it. Um, I don't know if that's three states. Well, there's, there's like traditional notifications is they appear, once you look at it, the system will dismiss it for you, right? 
And then our to do's is the reverse, right? Because it appears and then you have to actively dismiss it for it to go away. So it's, it's almost like the opposite. And then when I'm talking about pinning a notification, it's, I'm, I'm sort of doing the opposite of what you would do to a notification because you dismiss a notification on your phone, right? You do that. But I'm saying you pin a notification, which is, which is it's taking the design from a to-do, which is you create a to-do. So it's the reverse, and that's why there might be some dissonance um, from a design perspective. So I'm, I'm totally fine with if there's a way to resolve this or we just do it from a notification perspective, whereas you, once you look at it, it dismisses it automatically and you have to take an action to save it, right? We might do something like, and that, that fits with Andre's case. But that's totally, to, to me, it's like I'm on my email client and I just dismiss the email. And so that's me dismissing, actively dismissing a notification or email, but the system won't do it for me, right? So. Uh, so if I might, may add to that, I think there, there should be three states, right? Because um, it ties back into the notification uh, view, which is personalized. Um, and like, for example, you can pin, which is like, hey, this thing is really important. Keep this on the screen at all right, times right, kind right, of thing. Right. There's the thing like, hey, you got a notification. And there's this thing of like, hey, um, is this still relevant to the current user, yes or no? I mean, the user can have seen it or not. Um, but it might expire your thing or it might get get lower. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with whatever design I'm with, with. To me, that's more like the next level of design. I think, I think we can figure that out. Like there's, there should be some sort of a relevancy rating to, to, in order to, to, to justify, hey, this should be presented to the user at this time, yes or no. Right, right. Well, I mean, it's going to be time for the first iteration, right? But then it, it can definitely change. Like, I don't know what Slack does, but it's really confusing. But uh, I, I guess it's good enough. But I, I, I miss stuff all the time on Slack. So I, I blame Slack rather than myself. So Slack, they have the, the reminders list, right? You can right. set remind yourself of something. And uh, let's just, if, if looking at Slack, if we remove the time uh, aspect of the reminder, if uh, you could say that those are to-dos inside of Slack, or at least I use them in that sense. Uh, for me, sometimes it doesn't matter what I remind my, what is the time that I put the timer? What is the timer of the reminder? Sorry. Yeah, so, no, I, I use it exactly the same way you do, Pedro. I totally and so then I go to Slackbot, I, I uh, do slash reminder list or something like that. And it says you have all of these messages to yeah. attend to. Yeah, those are reminders, you but those are like to-dos, right? Those are totally to-dos. I do that myself. And, and, and to me, so... I see those like differently. Um, and so that I think we, I agree with everything that has been said so far by everyone. <laughs> the only thing is I'm not, I'm not convinced of putting, um, so we have activity, we have then notifications about the activity. So those notifications are your view of the global activity, but then to do's, because of the way they work and their lifetime, uh, I don't see them as attached to, but I see them attached to activity, but I don't see them working together and being in the same, uh, under the same roof. Isn't, isn't that what Victor was talking earlier about having a migration path? Because initially what I see, like the first step being right, is right, yep. uh, you have an activity and you have a button to promote this for, uh, make this a to-do. Like mm -hmm. automatically, yeah, that will be a first stage of this, the the thing. Whether we then remove to do's all com all together, I think it's up to uh, research and stuff to to get yeah. to part of that. Correct. Uh, but I, I I like that it's unified. To me, I'm not entirely sure of how things will go of getting away with to do's in the GitLab re reality. But I for now I think that's still up to be discovered. But uh, I personally like it being unified. Because that's the way I use notifications. Like I will make a notification in red as my to-do. Uh, but if I want to have like a separate to-do list, uh, that's a different use case. But so far, that's how I've been working. But it depends whether that's generic enough to have everyone following that model or not. <laughs> so uh, I think we can wrap up. So, so next steps. 
um, Pedro Arnable, um, what, what do, do you think it, it's reasonable to expect a, a more opinionated design <laughs> so we could actually argue? Um, I, I think we, we argue, we, we, uh, we agree with the problem. I don't think we actually stated the problem, but maybe it's so obvious, which is like, it's, this is really difficult to use the system and everybody uses it. Um, so I think that's the clear problem. And it has to be, everybody has very customizable personal workflows. So, so I think that's a problem in a nutshell. And then, so do, do you think you folks can come up with a more opinionated design that we can share with everybody, you know, in, in the plan team and at the managed team at least, and then we can proceed there. And then- I think, yeah. I, I think uh, the, the first step, uh, and this is something that I've, that I thought initially since, uh, and I'm looking at my comment from three months ago, uh, on that first issue where Dimitri posted a lot of uh, suggestions, the ver that very, very long issue. And my, I think our first approach is, I still think it's the same, which is to have parity between what you receive in your email and what you're able to see in the app. So inside of activity or somewhere else, we need a view of the notifications. I think that's, that's a given that we eventually need to have. Um, and the other parallel problem that we can solve at the same time is having uh, a way for people to configure which, not which to-dos are created automatically or not. Because we see a lot of people having so many, many, many to-dos. And as, as you said, Victor, our priorities are different, even right. between different teams at GitLab. Uh, and sometimes I don't need to receive a notification of this or of that. So even having that way to configure which to-dos you want to be cre have created automatically right. in the same way that you configured notifications. I think that's, that can be the two things that we can solve as a, as a first step in parallel. Oh. And then as a second step, maybe we can look into, like now that we have the list yeah. and now that people can configure their to-dos, how they want them to appear, how do we bridge this gap and well, yeah. bridge these two concepts together or make them closer? So, so Pedro, what I think we should do is, is to jump ahead, actually. Like, right now, it's not terrible. It's, and I, I think, like, the, I think we should have a bold design, like, which, like, a, a really great end state that we believe in. I think what you're saying, it makes sense that we need to iterate to get there, but I don't yeah. want to spend too much time figure out iterative solutions if we don't have an end state. So I'd rather we have an end state that we can argue about. Yes, it's going to be really philosophical and really far away. It'll maybe like take one and a half years to, to do. But I want the next, so Pedro, I'll assume that you can still listen. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, that we can, we want to have like a, this is, it can be rough mockups or just ideas of like an end state. Like, do you want to merge your activity feed? How should it look? Should it be different UIs and object model and stuff like that? So let's, let's set a stake in the ground with some of those designs and concept. And then we can talk about iterative steps to get there. Um, and then if along those ways, those iterative steps will, will drive us in a different direction, that's totally fine if we, get, we receive feedback. But I do want a, like this is a little bit different from other features we do at GitLab where we don't know the end state yet. For, but for this one, because it's so messy, I, I do think that there's a lot of value in, in knowing an end state and working toward it. Yeah. I think we, we agree with that. I was talking more in terms of like the strategy. how we do yeah, yeah. the strategy and how okay. we're going to put the building blocks. Right. But of course, if we can look into the future and kind of yeah. paint a good picture and, uh, of right. the whole house, uh, then we can decide where we're going to put it. And the, and the reason, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll leave this and then you can say whatever you want, Pedro, and I won't say anything more. Um, the reason why I want, some, I, I want something, like the next steps, what I would like to see is something like that the grand vision and the awesome design again it can be really low fidelity um but and then and then we can have like a lot of discussion and debate on that one and the reason is i there's urgency to fix this but we can still bleed along the way yes we're dying a slow death so yeah. we don't need to like save ourselves next month so i think it would be awesome like within a month or two, we have a really solid vision and we're really excited about it. And everybody at GitLab is on board and we've socialized it in team meetings and everybody knows the, the, the thing and we've blogged about it. Like within a couple of months, if we had this grand vision and like everybody at GitLab likes it, I think that's awesome. 
And so the first step there is, you know, within a couple of weeks, just getting that grand, grand idea and that grand vision. Yeah, this is definitely, I've been bleeding from this since I've joined <laughs> GitLab. And I think everyone here in this call can agree that they've been bleeding uh, about notifications about right, 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 right. join GitLab. It's uh, GitLab using GitLab, uh, basically. Yep. And uh, I've been called out on calls for having plus 99 to do's. Yeah, I have plus 99 to do's for, I think, one year, probably, or more. Uh, <laughs> whenever, whenever we added that number, everybody's had plus 99. <laughs> and, uh, and so I think this is one of those issues that is all, also impairing our, could be impairing our productivity. Maybe not individually, but collectively. Right. Collectively, it's a, it's we, a could tax, been, yeah. we could be working much faster and reacting to things in the right priority by yep. solving problems. So, yep. Okay. I think so. Yeah, so we, I'll, we, I'll, we, I'll, yeah. <laughs> I'll let you and Annabelle uh, update us. Um, please reach out, and then if I don't hear from you, like in a week, I, you know, I'll keep pinging you, and then we'll go from there. All right. Thanks, everybody, especially uh, not Thanks, folks. Okay. Bye now.